Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, move on to something that's a bit of an unusual thing um, with ZFS. It's a capability that kind of reverses or turns on its head um, a concept that we've been dealing with in ZFS. Um, so we've seen that when we create a Z pool, we need block devices and we use those block devices to create VDEVs, which are used to create a pool. Um, in ZFS, we can do the reverse. We can use a pool to make a block device available to the Linux system. And then we can use that block device as we would do any other block device. Now, word of warning before you think, oh, it would be interesting to use that block device on a ZFS system to create another ZFS system. Although I haven't tried it, I'd imagine you'd get a deadlock occur. Um, it probably wouldn't like that. It would be some sort of uh, issue, I would have thought, with doing that. I'd be very surprised if it did work because I'd never tried it, but I, I can't see that it would work. So um, it would be pointless anyway, although yes, it would be interesting to try. Um, what's the purpose of this? Um, I can't think of any real reason apart from you can create swap um, partitions with this method. So you'd create a block device on um, a Z pool and then you'd turn that block device into a swap um, device and then that would mount it. Now, um, I kind of think, well, what's the point of that? Because you've got a layer, an extra layer in between the physical device, which is the disk, and the logical device that you want, which is the swap. Why don't you just use the device directory for, directly for the swap? It would be far quicker if you were to be using swap, which obviously we'll try and avoid. Uh, the only thing I can think of why you might do that is that um, if you had a system that was completely orientated around ZFS, i.e. it booted uh, from a ZFS formatted data set, there was no um, spare drive or partition to create a swap file, that's probably the time when you would want to use it um, and obviously to have a swap as a standby if you did run out of memory. Um, you may also want to create the block devices, block devices for experimental reasons, but then again, if you um, have got other drives or partitions available with, say, X3 or 4, you can just create files on them and treat them as devices anyway, um, especially using the um, loopback system available within Linux. So I'm kind of not really sure what use this is. Um, I'm sure there are some beneficial uses. I mean, it could be even there's applications that have to talk with file systems that are based on X3 or X4. Um, so you could could do it for that, but um, it could be good for that. But I'll demonstrate this anyway, because, you know, there may be some benefit, maybe some um, real useful reason for, for having this. Um, so kind of told you more or less what, what it does. We are creating block devices on ZFS. They're actually called ZVOLs, so ZFS volumes. And and as I say, it's basically um, it's a block device that's exposed to the Linux system, um, but it's a volume or a um, data set on, on ZFS that is made to appear as if it is a block device. Um, to create a zvol, we need to use the minus v flag. So if I do zfs create, um, there's this capital V um, parameter here, and you have to specify the size of the volume you want to create and um, the name of the volume you think you want to give it. Because obviously it's a data set, we need to name the data set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a ZVOL, ZVOL, so ZFS create. As you can see, you can um, 
as usual, set other parameters before you set this um, minus V. And as before, with the O parameter, it can be repeated to set other values, other properties. But I'm going to create a Z file, so I use the minus V option. And then I specify a size, so I'm going to create a 500 gigabyte volume. And then I've got to tell it what pool it's on, and I've got to give it a name. So I'm just going to call it ZVOL1. And as usual, when you create a data set, it's virtually instantaneous when you create it. Do a ZFS list, and we can see that we've got a data set here that's just over 500 gigabytes inside. So this, this could be the binary decimal um format of 500 gigabyte that's but that's why it's not the same as what i typed in and um we can also see that it's virtually empty you'll also notice there's no mount point because it is a, a data set that's not going to be used as a, a file system that zfs is going to be managing all that zfs is doing is is, is managing it as a data set um, also worth noting that the um, the uh, data the 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 data that's been specified the size of the volume that's been specified, although this still reports um, the ZFS list still reports one point three two terabytes available that's available space to ZFS to allocate it's not user allocation space so that's why that's still roughly the maximum but if you do DF minus H as I've just done here you'll see this reports that the pool and therefore all the other data sets that are mounted have got far less available space so 500 plus that would roughly equal 1.3 terabytes so you can see straight away that um, the volume, the ZVOL, has removed that space available because we've effectively effectively reserved that space for the ZVOL. So that's, again, worth pointing out that this available space is what's available to ZFS. So that includes the spare space available in the in all these file systems, in all these uh, data sets. So it's the test pool data set the test data set in our case and the Z file one it can um, allocate this amount of data to all of these um, these data sets whereas for the user there is only 832 available because the 500 has been reserved also if we did LS minus L um, on the root you'll see that we've got the test um, data set, which is the data set of the pool. If we look inside that, we've only got the test data set within, within that. There is no other reference um, to um, the data set, uh, sorry, the Z file that we've just created. So that's the only way we know that it's there. It does, however, appear as a block device, and it appears in a couple of places. The first place it appears in, well, it appears always in dev, because it's now a block device. First place you can access it is as um, this ZD0. So we could do if this one itself, for example, slash dev slash ZD0. And it will tell us some basic information about it. One thing to note is the logical sectors are set to 512 bytes, but the physical and therefore the optimal block size is 8K. So that's worth bearing in mind um, if you wish to use a Z file and you wish to use the um, optimum um, sector size. So the other way of accessing the Z vault is, is the preferred method actually. This is the, the method that's not recommended um, 
probably because when you um, start up the pool, um, there's a chance, I guess, that the um, allocation here could change. If you had several Z voles, this might come up as ZD1 instead of ZD0. So you may not be referring to the same um, Z vol that you thought you were. The preferred method to access them is through dev again, but through a Z vol uh, directory which has a link to the pool and then finally a list of the Z file data set names. So that, that would be the preferred way of doing it. As you can see, the information apart from the name is identical. So let's actually um, create a, file, a partition on this volume. You can see it just behaves the same, exactly the same as uh, any other block device. Again, when we do a P to print out the details, you can see the logical and physical 512 and 8K, 512 bytes and 8 kilobytes, and the optimal is um, 8 kilobytes. So I'll create a partition. I'll just take the defaults, use the whole of the disk, and allocate a partition for the whole of the disk of type Linux and you can see it's created there you can even see the name of the partition it's created there it's appended a P1 to the name of the um, Z file name so I'll just write that to disk and that's done now I can create a file system on there so slash dev slash Z file the pull the Zvol name, and obviously I need to refer to the partition now, which as you can see is dash part one. And you can see it's just behaving as it normally would. The only difference is this is on top of a ZFS pool. Uh, obviously it's going to be that little bit slower because it's doing, um, it's got to go through another um, layer, another software layer. Uh, so that's written, so now we can actually mount that partition. Zvol dash part one, and let's mount it on MNT, and that's done. Do df minus h, and there's the partition that we've created. Um, and as you can see, it's a ordinary data partition um, x4 so it's created the lost and found directory if we do mount you'll see it's there with defaults it's got a stripe there so it's obviously something to do with the fact that it's on ZFS I presume um, and we can just treat that as any other file system really now and with the difference that it is an X, X4 partition, but it's sitting, it's backed onto a ZFS partition. And all that means all the stuff we can do with um, ZFS data sets, rather, not partition, things we can do with a ZFS data set, we can do with this X4 data set, uh, this X4 partition. So that means we could set the compression on. In fact, it might already be set on. Let's take a look at it. Um, ZFS get compression for test slash ZVOL1 and you can see it's on so this means that we will now get the advantage of compression on an X4 system which we wouldn't normally get so we could do copy our user directory and copy it in here. Although it's only 500 gigabytes, uh, sorry, it's gigabytes, isn't it? Not megabytes. Um, we should get the um, compression working. So I'm going to let that run just for a little while. And then we can examine the stats for it. So I'll stop it now. 
So DF minus H, you can see we've copied 400 megs, but if I create a directory on my root and sit, copy everything in here to that root temp, you'll see that course forward slash root temp you'll see that um, again the um, ZFS is reporting actual used i.e. the compressed data that it's stored on uh, in the pool rather than the actual uh, real size so I'll just wait for this to copy back to a normal X4 system um, while that's running, what I'll do is I'll show a uh, creation of a swap ZVOL. So we can do ZFS create again. Bear in mind this is still copying in the background. Everything we do on ZFS is online. It's only when we get problems we need to physically access the disks that we need to take the um, data sets and pools offline. So I'm going to create another 500 gigabyte partition which is quite a large size for swap, but you never know. Call it ZVOL swap. And then I can just use make swap directly onto it. So slash dev slash ZVOL test. There's my um, ZVOLs that exist at the moment. I want to use the swap one that I've just created, and there it's set up a 500 gigabyte swap, and I can now actually use that. And if I do swap on, you can see. In fact, it's uh, maybe maybe there's a limit. I don't know. There might be a limit on swap sizes of five, uh, 256 gig because it's obviously half the size um, that that I've actually given to it. But you can see anyway that it's it's worked. It's it's got a swap file on on top of ZFS. Now, um, one thing to bear in mind with ZFS on Linux, there is um, a problem with using a swap. Um, in that it can deadlock and I've tried this and it does happen um, and invariably involves a reboot so um, you can't actually use it at the moment in the state it's in um, if you go to the ZFS on Linux web page you can click through the links to to read a bit more about that so the there is um, the developers are aware of this problem so in case it gets used I'm going to turn that off and deactivate it and I'm going to destroy it as well and to destroy a Z file is no different to how you would normally destroy it, you just specify the pool and the Z file name and there that's gone that's returned the um, space back to the pool Right, so this is still copying. It seems to be taking quite a while for some reason. Um, let's look at the U minus SH root temp, see how much it's copied. Okay, so it's copied 2 gig already. Um, and yet, as you can see here, there's only actually 400 megabytes that's actually been used by ZFS so again that proves that we've got an X4 file system that is using compression in, in the background because of ZFS so um, again like I said I can't really think I, there may be possibly with virtual machines you might set up separate partitions although again why would you do it onto a foreign 
file system when you've got a native file system with ZFS. I don't really know. Um, you know, if, if you know or are aware of any valid reasons or good reasons for, use, for using Z files like this, I'd, I'd love to hear about it. Um, but I, I can't really think. It's more of a, a sort of um, curio uh, than anything else. But um, yes, a quite interesting thing to be able to do.